Welcome to ECLIMU, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to consider a phenomena that you always interact with when you visit a barber shop to shave your hair. You always realize that you can see the image of your head more than four times. What happens? Remember, in the previous lesson, when we looked at formation of images, on a mirror, we realize that when we have one mirror and an object in front of it, an image or one image will be formed inside that mirror. Now in this lesson, we are going to consider when we have two mirrors and these mirrors, we are going to place them at an angle. And then what we are going to realize is that several images will be formed depending on the angle between the two mirrors. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, we are going to consider when two mirrors are at parallel to each other. Parallel to each other, it means the angle between them is zero degrees. So in this case, we are going to realize that several images will be formed, which we cannot be able to count. And then we will consider two mirrors which are at an angle. And now this angle is going to be theta, and theta will range between 1 degree to 360 degrees. And what we are going to realize is that the number of images formed when mirrors are at an angle, which ranges from 1 degree to 360 degrees, will depend on the angle. If the angle is too large, then few images will be formed. And as the angle reduces, the number of images formed will be more. So let's consider the first scenario where we have two mirrors parallel to each other. And you can perform this experiment by drawing two parallel lines. Make sure you use a ruler. This is parallel line one, this one here, then this parallel line two. Then you take a mirror, you place it in parallel line one, so it will be mirror one. Then you take another mirror you place it in the second line mirror two then now you take an object that is uh, an object like this one either a pen a pencil a ruler a, a cup anything then when you place it there you observe inside mirror one what can you see and then at the same time you observe into mirror two what are you able to see so what you realize if you observe into mirror one you will see several number of images which you cannot be able to count number of images which you are not able to count we call them infinite number of images number of images which are uncountable and then another thing that you will realize is that the images are several you also in mirror two so in mirror one and mirror two the number of images which will be formed there are uncountable now, the reason why they are uncountable is because this object will be formed as an image in mirror 2. Let's say this one will be formed as an image inside mirror 2. And then in mirror 1 also, an image will be formed. This is the first image in mirror 1, first image in mirror 2. And then now this image, image 1 in mirror 1, will act as an object and it will form an image in mirror 2. And then this one, so this one will be image two in this case. And then this image in mirror two will also act as an object to form an image in mirror one. So this repeated, this one also would act as an object, as an object, and it will form an, um, an image in mirror two. This one also will act as an object. So this uh, continuous imaging or successive reflection of these images is the one that makes them be many so that you cannot count now another thing that you will observe is that the images which will be formed will be faint the images will not be so clear away from the mirror they will be fainter as you move away from the mirror the reason why they become faint is because of this successive reflection and when we have successive reflection some energy some light energy will be absorbed in this mirror and if some energy is absorbed, then it means the intensity of the image or the clarity of the image will reduce. Now, the second scenario that we're going to consider 
is when we have two mirrors at an angle, remember in the first setup, we looked at parallel lines where we said the angle between them is equals to zero and then the number of images which were formed are infinite. So in this case, we are going to consider a scenario where the angle between the two mirrors is in the range of one degree to 360 degrees. And what we are going to realize in this case is that the number of images which will be formed can be counted. Now, to perform this experiment, you can make two lines on a plain paper, which in this case, you can start with an angle of 90. So the first one, you call it mirror one, you place a mirror there. Then in the second line, mirror two, you place a mirror there. And then you take an object, even your finger or a pen, this is the object, you place it there. And then now you observe from this point here, this is your eye. This is your eye, you observe inside the mirror and then count the number of images which will be formed and not down, we are going to see later. Then now you can vary this uh, angle, you can change it now, become 60 degrees. So this one will be your mirror M3, mirror three. You change it now to 60 degrees and then you place an object here, you observe how many number of images will be formed. Then you can even change this angle further to 45 degrees, you can change it to 45 degrees and then you place an object there, you look inside these two mirrors, you see or you count the number of images which will be formed. Now, a quick observation that you will see is that when you are going to decrease the, the, the angle from 90 to 45, the number of images will be increasing. If you have 90, the number of images will be very few. As you go to 60, number of images will increase. And then when you go to 45, the number of images will be more. And another thing that you will observe is that in this case, from 90 to 45, the number of images can be counted. So this number of images which are formed either when mirrors are at an, at an angle or when mirrors are at zero degree can be calculated using a mathematical expression or a formula, which goes number of images is equals to 360 degree divided by the angle between the two mirrors, you subtract one. So we want to consider a scenario where the angle between the two mirrors was zero. So we want to know, can it bring infinite number of images? So in this case, if we put our n, which is the number of images, is equal to 360, divided by the angle between them, in this case was zero degrees, subtract by one. Now, I want you to take a calculator and fit this number, 360 divided by zero. What will you get? The calculator will tell you math error. Math error means the number is too big. Even the calculator cannot be able to count or to read it. So it means a number which is too big is infinite, and we write it as an inverted eight, then subtracted by one. So that is the number of images which will be formed when mirrors are parallel to each other. But now I want to ask you a question. You have several coins in your pocket. Then you remove one coin. The several coins that you had, you didn't know the number of coins that you had. Now you remove one. Will you be able to know the number of coins which will remain? The answer is no. Since you did not know the original number of coins, if you remove one, you will still not know the number of coins which will remain. So here, if you have infinite number of images, you don't know the number. Then now you remove one, it means the number of images which will remain cannot be known also. So finally, the number of images will be infinite. This is this is simple, we call it infinite. So when you have parallel mirrors, the angle between them is zero, then any number divided by the zero is infinite. And then when you solve, it will give you infinite. Then now we are going to consider a case now when we have 90 degrees or 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and we will see how the number of images will be formed. But in this case, we can even consider 90. Let's say number of images is equal to 360 degrees divided by 90. That is our theta now, subtracted by one. Now, N in this case, it's going to be 360 divided by 90 uh, is four. Then subtract one, then the number of images which will be formed will be three images. So when you have an angle of 90, only three images will be observed inside these mirrors. Then let's proceed with another example. 
Find the number of images formed when mirrors are inclined at 20 degrees. What you only need is the formula. Number of images is equals to 360 degrees divided by theta subtract by 1. Now, in this case, our theta is equals to 20 degrees. Then, therefore, n is equals to 360 degrees. You divided by 20 degrees subtract by 1. So, in this case, it will go like this. 2, 1, 2, 18. So number of images now n is equals to 18 subtract by 1, n is going to be 17 images. So if you have two mirrors at 20 degrees to each other, 17 images will be formed. Another example, find the angle between two mirrors if that five images are formed. So in this case, they are given us n, which is that five images then they are look, telling us to, to find theta then if we write our formula n is equals to 360 divided by theta subtract 1 we have n 360 is a constant which is an angle then 1 is a constant we are looking for theta in this case therefore what we do we feed n where it is in this case, we will have that 5 is equal to 360 degrees divided by theta, then subtract 1. Then in this case, we will put like terms together. Theta is an angle, 360 is, a, is, a, is in degrees. Then 1 is a number, that 5 is a number. Then we will take 1 the other side, so that when it goes there, it becomes a positive. Then in this case, we will have... 36, that 5 plus 1 is 36, is equal to 360 degrees divided by theta in, in degrees. Then in this case, what we will do, we will multiply by uh, theta on both sides. So if we multiply by theta here, then multiply by theta, then what will happen on the right hand side, theta will go with theta, then we will remain with 36 theta is equal to 360 degrees. Then now, if we want to remain with theta, then we will divide by 36 on both sides, divided by that 6. Then now, in this case, that 6 will cancel with that 6, and we will remain with theta in degrees. is going to be, now, 36 goes to 360 once. It will go here. 10 times, then now what will remain as our theta is 10 degrees. So the angle between two mirrors for it to form that five images is uh, 30, or 10 degrees. And if you want to confirm this, then you will feed it inside this formula, and then it will bring you that five images. So the last question, I'm going to do Roman 1, then you will do Roman 2 as an assignment. This is your assignment. Then in this case, the question reads, at what angle would two mirrors be inclined if the number of images uh, formed are 14? So they are asking us to find an angle. And they have given us the number of images as 14. So in this case, we will write down what you have. N is equals to 14 images. Then theta is what we are looking for. Then now from our formula, n is equal to 360 degree divided by theta in degrees, subtract 1. Then when you feed n here, it will be 14 images is equal to 360 degrees divided by theta, subtract 1. Then now we bring like terms together. Remember this theta is in degrees, so we bring like terms together. 1 to go to this left hand side then it will remain as 15 is equals to 360 uh, divided by theta. Then in this case, for us to find theta, you multiply by theta on both sides, theta. Then theta will cancel with theta on the right hand side. Then we will remain with 15 uh, theta is equals to 360 uh, degrees. Then in this case, for you to find theta or to remain with it on one side 
you divide by 15 on both sides, divide by 15, then you will have your theta is equals to 360 divided by 15. 360 divided by 15, which will give you 24. So it will give you 24 degrees. So the angle between these two mirrors for it to give you 14 images is 24 degrees. So I want you to try the question where you have 25 images formed. And if you get any challenge, then you visit ECLM website. There are several questions with several solutions on the same. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will look at rotation of mirrors.